The ES 2020 features were just approved by the TC39 committee and in the proposal there is dynamic importing. Dynamic importing allows us to load imports asynchronously and that means you're only loading what you need when you need it. In this video we're going to refactor some code so you can start using dynamic importing. And if you liked the video make sure you hit the like button and subscribe because there's going to be a few more like this. Let's jump in. This is a feature I was really excited about because I've been leveraging it in Webpack for small build sizes for a long time. Leave a comment below with the feature you're most excited about in ES 2020. The first thing I usually do when I'm looking at a new feature is I actually head to the MDN docs. So if you're looking for some more information or more detailed information on this, make sure you head over there to check it out and I'll leave a link in the description below. Now for this app, I've just created a very basic index.html which imports a source or index.js and in the index.js I'm importing from the app.js and I'm calling the function from the app.js in an, an event listener here when I click this button. And all it does is it shows a little bit of content on the screen. So that's a common enough use case where you might have some things that are hidden from the view when you're actually building your own apps. And in the app.js, there's nothing too complex here. All we're doing is we're finding the app element and we're appending some content to the screen. So the only problem with this is if we look at the network tab down here and I refresh it, you'll notice even though I haven't clicked the button yet, you'll see that the app.js has was loaded. So if this was a big file and our users never actually went there, we'd be delivering a lot of data to their browser that they don't actually need. So it's a little bit slower to load your app. So let's refactor this to only load that import when we actually use it. So the first thing we do is we are going to delete the import from the top level. Then because dynamic imports return a promise, we are going to make this into an asynchronous or an async function. And then I will say const app, because I'm going to destructure it from the module, equals await, and then we do our import. So when we save this, we notice the app.js wasn't loaded this time, but when we click, it actually loads now. So this is a much more efficient way of, you know, actually loading content when you need it. And as you can see, you're basically just removing one line of code from the top level and moving it down and dealing with it asynchronously. And if you check out the can I use uh, charts, you'll see that pretty much all browsers are supporting this, except for, of course, IE, but there's nothing we can do about that. And as you can tell, it's not that, as you can see, it's not that difficult to set up. If you liked the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you like and subscribe. And until the next one, happy coding.